Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about this very interesting blog post that Codeweavers have just released, which is all about crossover support for DirectX 12. So if you don't already know, crossover is a method of running Windows games on the macOS operating system, and it does this by translating Windows graphics API calls into macOS compatible graphics API calls. And one of the big limitations of crossover at the moment is that the latest version of DirectX that it supports is DirectX 11. Over the last few years, this has been achieved using something called DXVK, which is a Vulkan-based translation layer which translates the DirectX API calls and translate that into something that the Metal Graphics API can use on the Mac operating system. More recently, with the release of Crossover 21.1, DirectX 10 and 11 games can also be played using something called Wine D3D, which is an alternate way of running those DirectX 10 and 11 games which aren't compatible with DXVK. However, despite the fact that these translation layers give compatibility for many AAA games, for example, The Witcher 3, Battlefield 1, Halo Master Chief Collection, what they don't do is allow support for DirectX 12. So DirectX 12 was first released in 2015, and it wasn't particularly popular at the time. Most games at the time were still being released with DirectX 11. However, over the last few years, more and more popular AAA games have been released using DirectX 12. Most notably, some of the most requested games that I get asked about M1 Mac compatibility for are games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077. And in the future, more and more games are gonna be using DirectX 12 only. And so therefore, if Crossover is unable to support DirectX 12, then we're gonna be missing out on a lot of the future Windows game releases. However, with this blog post that Codeweavers have written, it seems like DirectX 12 support for Crossover will come. It's just a question of how long it's gonna take. And in the blog post, they outline some of the challenges that they face. So just a warning about this first before I delve into this too deeply, I'm not really an expert on graphics APIs, but as a Mac gamer, I'm very interested in this level of transparency. And it's very interesting to see the difficulties that code weavers are having with getting the latest AAA games to run on the Mac operating system. So one of the interesting things that code weavers talks about is the division between the Linux and Mac support. So crossover is something that Linux users can also use. And what it means is that DirectX 12 on Linux is gonna be supported in 2022 with a release of Crossover 22. So what Coweavers are saying with the Mac side of things is that there is an additional layer of complexity when trying to use Vulkan D3D for DirectX 12 games. And that complexity is Apple's graphics API called Metal. So currently, virtually all games that run on the M1 Mac on the Mac operating system make use of the Metal graphics API in order to maximize visual fidelity and performance. There are some exceptions to this. For example, CSGO still makes use of OpenGL, but the majority of ports now target the Metal graphics API. However, what Codeweavers are saying here is that Metal has a limit on resources. So they say here that games need to access 1 million shader resource views, or SRVs. However, Metal will only support half a million resources per argument buffer. This limit is sufficient for Vulkan, but not for DirectX 12. And this basically means that Crossover on Mac cannot currently support DirectX 12 games. Secondly, Code Weavers are saying that DirectX 12 uses GPU virtual addresses, or VAs, in order to support ray tracing. And DirectX 12 also makes use of the buffer device address extension. However, Apple has not added support for VAs or BDAs, which makes it very difficult for translation layers like Molten VK or VKD3D to work. So it doesn't really look good for DirectX 12 support, but the end of the article is quite interesting. And what Code Weavers are saying is that they do believe that DirectX 12 support for Mac could arrive as early as Crossover 23. So given Codeweaver's release schedule and the way that they number their software releases, this really sounds like they're working on the issues that they've outlined. And Crossover 23, which is probably gonna come out in September 2023, could potentially support DirectX 12 then. So this is all very interesting, and I do really look forward to DirectX 12 support. It'd be very interesting to see how games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 would function on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, as well as plenty of other games in the future, or even something like Horizon Zero Dawn or the massively multiplayer game New World. So crossover is not the only method of running Windows games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. There's also the opportunity to use Parallels, which allows you to run Windows 11 ARM as a virtual machine. And what's interesting is that Parallels also has the same issue, DirectX 12 games 
cannot be run through Parallels on the M1 Mac. And this is due to an incompatibility with the Parallels graphics adapter. And what's interesting is that I've tried to reach out to Parallels in order to find out if and when DirectX 12 game support will come to Parallels. And what's interesting is that in this email exchange here, I've really asked when Parallels will support DirectX 12. And the answer I got is, Unfortunately, I can't reveal any information of this kind. Smiley face. And I can understand this is gonna be a kind of corporate secret. Firstly, you wanna make sure that what you want to achieve is actually possible in the first place before you announce that you're working on it. And secondly, if they do achieve this goal, they're probably going to tie it into a later product release. For example, Parallels 18 or Parallels 19, which would be a huge feature definitely worth upgrading for. So it's very interesting that Crossover and Parallels are both facing issues with DirectX 12. They both have very different technical challenges ahead of them. And it's interesting to see that Crossover have produced this blog post. This is a question that they must get asked constantly. So they've just come out transparently saying, this is gonna be at least a year and a half away. We're working on it, these are the challenges. We hope that we're gonna fix it in the future. And it's interesting that Parallels, they're more of a closed source kind of commercial operation. They're keeping their cards closer to their chest. I do think that one one day they will be able to achieve DirectX 12 support and hopefully we're going to get loads of future DirectX 12 games working, especially on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. On the Parallels side, on Windows 11 ARM, it's actually possible for some DirectX 12 games to actually run on Parallels. That's by using specific hacks in order to run these DirectX 12 games as DirectX 11 games instead. If you'd like to check out my last video, I made a video about how to run Final Fantasy 7 Remake, which is a DirectX 12 release, but we can run this as a DirectX 11 game. So if you'd like to find out my latest tutorial on how to get parallels and also crossover working on your Apple Silicon Mac, then please check out my video tutorial where I go over step by step how to get these working. If you do follow these tutorials, please make sure to click on the links in the description. If you do make a purchase of either of these pieces of software, I'll receive a cut and you'll be helping to support the work that I do on this channel. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.